Hey guys, it's me, and today I'm continuing to work on my mobile app. Last time I added functionality to track operations between all entities. This means you can now record all expenses and income on credit cards and cash wallets. However, I haven't yet managed to do one important thing. I haven't added the API that will connect my mobile application to the backend. Additionally, I noticed a significant problem. My PyCharm is configured in a way that every time I save a file, it auto-formats and also removes unnecessary imports. This is of course good, but it turns out that it considers some imports for my automated test redundant. For instance, this import of the create user function I use in many places as a fixture for my test. And instead of copy pasting this function across all test files, I decided to simply import it. I don't know exactly how to fix this problem, so I decided to ask ChatGPT. To be honest, I didn't like any of the answers because it offered solutions that either ignored the problem or created new ones. So I went to Google. It turned out that this is a well-known problem and there is a solution. Instead of importing shared fixtures throughout the model, you can add a conf.test.py file, which will contain all the necessary functions, and PyTest will find them for each test by name. I liked this approach, I used it, and the problem was solved. To be honest, I could have ignored this issue at all and continued developing the application. But I really want to write code that I'll be able to maintain in the future. Well, it is time to work on the API that will link the mobile app to the backend. I need to add API endpoints for creating all four types of operations. Actually, at this stage of development they are quite similar, so in essence I have to write only one view set from scratch and then adapt the models and services for other entities. I started with the replenish account. I had a small break, so I initially began writing the view set itself, but this doesn't fit the test-driven development approach, since tests should be written first. I eventually finished writing the functionality and then switched to automated tests. First, I write a test for a positive scenario, the user is registered, authenticated and all entered data is correct. Next, I add a test scenario for the case when the user doesn't have access to this operation. This is a relatively easy test, as all I need to verify is that the backend returns an authentication error. After that, I write the last test for this endpoint, again negative, but this time I will pass the wrong data type in the body of the request. Well, I wrote three tests for the replenish account endpoint and I also added the functionality itself. Now it is time to run my tests. I am running the command by test and we can see that all the tests have passed successfully. By the way, during this time I have written 42 tests, which is pretty amazing. Ok, now I'll be writing tests similar to those I wrote for the money account replenishment functionality, so let's get to that. Okay, I wrote all tests, I wrote all the functionality for my endpoints, and now let's check how it works. I am running the command by test, and we can see that all the tests have passed successfully. It is time to make a commit and push my code to the repository. So, even though this code session was not very long, but I have managed to accomplish three important things. Add API endpoints for money operations, write tests for them, and also do a refactoring of the existing automated tests. You might ask, where is actually your application? And your question would be very apt. 
Next time I'll finally be connecting the backend and frontend, so my React Native app will be connected to the data. Thank you friends for watching this video, I really appreciate it. See you next time.